In life, we all encounter obstacles, and those obstacles come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. The question is, how do we handle those obstacles? Do we attack them head on, or do we allow them to make us quit? Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves, their dreams, or their goals. We will interview successful people from all walks of life as they share their no quit stories when they had the choice to give up or give in, but they didn't. We thank you for listening, and we hope to be that jolt of positivity as you go for your greatness. Welcome to episode number 229 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is the importance of listening to your body. Our quote of the day comes to us from Sonia Chaquette. To listen to your body and respect how it feels is a powerful act of self-love. Today's episode is sponsored by Khan. Your journey is your story. Khan is a lifestyle jewelry brand that simply exists to embody your unique personal journey and remind you that no matter how difficult life can be, anything is possible. Be the dream, be the change with Khan. Follow at Khan Life, Q-A-N, and support the mission at ConLife.com, Q-A-N-L-I-F-E dot com. It is my pleasure to bring you today's episode. Our guest, Dr. Shannon Pierce, has gone through her own struggles with her health, never quitting, but always learning. Today, she is paying it forward, not only to her clients, but to so many others as well. She shares some really great stuff, both from a medical perspective, as well as through her own personal experience. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Shannon, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen today? So ready. Always ready. (laughs) All right. So as you know, the number one objective of our show is to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up. And I was curious if you had either a no quit story yourself or perhaps a really challenging time where you could have given up or given in, but you didn't. Yes, big time. I mean, and I think everyone does in some capacity. So it's just finding like the people you resonate with. So for me, um, pretty much my whole life, I struggled with chronic health problems. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was eight years old after a head injury, totally freak accident, um, but got really sick from that and took years to feel like I was getting better. I went the natural route. I really, even at a really young age, at 16 years old, I was researching health and wellness and nutrition and got my first chiropractic adjustment when I was 11 and it helped with some headaches. So I was like, this is amazing. This is what I want to do with my life. And that was all well and good. And I feel like I got myself to a place where I was really functional. I was doing really well. And then I decided I myself wanted to be a chiropractor. So I went off to chiropractic school and with getting your doctorate comes some stress and comes some additional stuff going on. So I felt like my health was struggling again, graduated. My husband and I moved across the country, started a business, layer on a little bit more stress. And then I got pregnant with my son and who is five now and totally lost my health. I mean, at this point I was already a doctor. I was helping other people with their health and wellness and I couldn't get control of my own health, which for me was a very humbling experience and honestly quite embarrassing. People who knew me in that phase of my life had no idea how sick I was because I felt like it was something um, I was failing at, like I was not doing well with it. So after my son was born about two weeks later, my hands hurt so bad, I couldn't even use them. I couldn't pick him up for the first two hours of every single day. I was getting daily migraines. I would spend days in bed not being able to get up, not being able to function really. And as a new mom, like that sucks. Anyone who has kids, you know, like your priority is you want to be there for them. Um, And I didn't know what to do because in my mind, I was the healthiest person I knew. I ate well, I exercised, I took all the best vitamins, you know, we were super clean living. I didn't know what was missing. Um, I tried everything I thought I knew to try again and nothing worked. And that went on for two years. It actually got so bad that the second year of my illness, I had to totally stop practicing. I couldn't adjust people because I couldn't feel my hands. I was so tired and fatigued and weak that I felt like I would hurt somebody if I was trying to help them. Um, So my husband had to take over all of that. And that put a huge strain on our marriage because all of a sudden now he was working the amount of two full-time doctors that we used to run our office together. He was having to take care of the baby. He was having to take care of the house because I physically couldn't function anymore. And for me, I remember there was a morning I woke up and I was like, 
this is what it's going to be like. Like, this is what the rest, I'll, I'll probably tear up just talking about it. It still sucks to think about. Um, but like, this is what it's going to look like. And I don't want my family or my son to resent me, to feel like I wasn't there for them. I wasn't able to do what I needed to do for them. Um, so that was the morning that I was like, I'm figuring this out. I fully believe with every ounce of my body that you, your body is always doing something on purpose. You might not understand why we were not designed to be sick. And if you can figure out for me specifically, for the person who's struggling specifically, what your triggers are, what's going on, what's making those things happen in your body. If you can find that answer, the body can 100% heal. So I took the next three years and dove deep. I started researching all the functional testing. I started researching everything about microbiome, about how to naturally balance and heal a body. And that has brought me to what I do today, which is really the functional, really deep dive into chronic illness and chronic pain. Um, and I can say very happily that five years later, I am pain-free. I am back to working full-time. I have grown a giant online health business, helping people all over the world to really get over their chronic health struggles. And I know that I went through that so I can help other people who are currently struggling because way more people than we realize struggle with chronic health issues. A lot of times they're just not talking about it or not sharing it because they too feel kind of defeated that their body's not performing the way they want to. So that was a very dark time for us, but coming through it and looking back, I'm thankful that, um, you know, I went through that and what I learned is so valuable and is helping so many people that I wouldn't change it. Thank you so much for, for touching on that. I really, I really do appreciate it. And I want to follow up and see what it was that you were putting in your mind or reading that helped you during those really difficult times. Yes, I am a avid believer in both, you know, anatomy and physiology. If you can figure out how the body works, you can figure out how to fix it. But then mindset, I mean, you've just got to really believe that like things can change and things can turn around. So I sought out some of the best of the best, which I feel like most people when they're struggling will do. Um, I went to natural healthcare doctors and I just picked their brain and I was listening to tons of, you know, more natural healing type things. I love a lot of um, like meditation work and mindset work and those types of things. So I really searched out all avenues from the more spiritual to the actual kind of medical side of things and blended that together. And for me, I think that's the most unique piece of the puzzle is you're not going to find one thing that works for everybody. You're not going to find one piece that you're like, yep, that was it. That's what changed everything. It's layering together the things that have been tested and proven and work consistently until you find what your best plan is. That is so spot on with what you just said. I think there is definitely nothing that is one size fits all. What works perfectly for someone might not be the best fit for others. And there's nothing that's undefeated or perfect when it comes to working for every single person for all different aspects. And I was hoping you would tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do today. Yeah, so I am um, a natural kind of holistic doctor. I work with people all over the world to really dig down and find their answers for their chronic health issues. I really love to work with people who have chronic pain, chronic fatigue, autoimmune conditions. And I actually wrote a book called The Wellness Way Approach to Thyroid. So how to naturally balance thyroid and Hashimoto's. Um, and my choice is always going based on testing. So I think that there's a lot of great things out there. There's a lot of wonderful supplements and protocols and detoxes. And not that any of those are wrong, but unless you know what your body needs, I think that is the biggest reason why people are still struggling with their health is they're trying to follow a protocol or a piece or something else that worked for another person when your reason for pain or fatigue or illness or autoimmune is probably totally different. So everything I do starts with functional testing. We look at a lot of stool samples and hormone mapping and blood work and things that really get your answer before I even go into any treatment plans because people come to me all the time and say, Hey, what can I do to balance my thyroid? I don't know. Why is your thyroid off? We need to answer that question first. And then I can start telling you what we can do to fix it. So that's really what I love to do is get with people, link arms, find some answers, and then put a really practical plan in place on how they're going to get their body and their health and their mindset and their joy back. Um, but put that plan together and get people out of that rut of chronic illness. I love how you just said putting a plan together. I think that is so key. And it's such an important part. Action is unbelievably key. But 
when you take action that is specific to a plan, I think that's when you take success to a whole new level. And speaking of success, what does success look like or how do you personally define success? That I would uh, definitely has changed over the last five years. So my success now is doing something that I love, that brings me joy, that I don't feel like at the end of the day, I'm stressed or worried about. So I was listening to a podcast once and the lady said, if you hear it and it doesn't make you say, ah, heck yes, then you don't do it. And if you you hear it and you're like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. You don't do it. And I think so many people don't realize like you have that choice. If you hate your job, leave. If you're unhappy with, you know, the town you live in, move. I mean, there is such a limited amount of time for you to do what you were put on this earth to do. Success is at the end of the day, are you joyful? Are you happy? Do you love what you're doing? And if you don't change it, there has never been an easier or better time than now to just recreate whatever it is you want to do. So that's my main priority. Is my family happy and healthy? Am I joyful? Um, and, And in that joy, am I now bringing something that I can serve other people with out of a a place of true, just wanting to help people. I love asking that question because there is no right or wrong answer. And your definition was, was perfect for you. And you, you focused on being joyful and happy, not being stressed is also such a key part. I think of both success as well as being happy. Yeah. Especially in what I deal with people, chronic stress will create more health issues hands down than anything else. And I don't like just, figuring out how to manage that and how to relieve as much of it as you can. And there's always going to be stress. So also having really good tools that you can use when you are put in the presence of stress. How do you release it quickly that it doesn't get stored in your body and then manifest as pain and anxiety and depression and all the things that so many people suffer with? So as a doctor, as well as what you went through over the past five years, I was curious if you have a morning routine. 100%. And I think that it is the key to me staying happy and balanced. So my first thing that I do is I do 15 minutes minimum of meditation before I look at anything. So you don't open the phone, you don't read your emails, you don't check your bank account, you need to reset your mind for the day. And some of that is just getting quiet. People have all these different ideas of what meditation is, but you just need to take those first few minutes and allow your body to reset and get ready for the day. And then I choose to do at least five minutes of some type of visualization or gratitude practice, just really going through either things that I'm anticipating and excitedly awaiting or things that I'm thankful that I already have and just start my day in that mindset. And then I work out five, six days a week, um, depending on how my body feels, different types of workouts to get my body physically moving. And then I have my supplement and energy regimen that I do every single morning And when I do those things consistently and I'm on point, my life feels very different. And there are definitely times that I'm off point and don't do them. And I can immediately feel the difference, not just in my body, but also in just how my life is playing out in front of me. If I let those things slide, I can definitely feel more of that anxiousness and some stress coming back on. So I think having a morning routine for everybody is so important. And it doesn't have to be two hours. If all you have is 20 minutes, that's fine build that into your day and you're going to start to learn to enjoy it. And you might notice that it starts to expand just because you feel better the longer you give yourself that time in the morning. You know, I I think it's so important that you touched on the importance of it doesn't have to be two hours. And I had a guest on a few months ago that spoke about it's okay if you fall off, meaning if you don't have a day where you do your morning routine, the best thing is just to jump back on it the next day. And I think as we have, as we all have kids or family or jobs or travel Reality is you don't have the exact same time and schedule every single day, but the importance is to be consistent with it. So if you only have five or 10 minutes today, but typically you have a 30 minute routine, I always believe that it's better to do five or 10 minutes and to start your day off as much as you can. And it's better than not doing anything. Obviously, it's not the same as that full 20 or 30 minutes, but I think it's always it's always better than doing nothing. Yes. And one of the things I teach all of my patients is I call it shortening the refractory period is everyone falls off. But instead of falling off for six months, if you can start training yourself to fall off for two or three days and then you can course correct, that's consistency. That's how you make change. It's not perfection. You don't have to do it every single day. Just don't look back and realize you've been off track for two years when you could have got that back on, you know, two or three days. You know, I was I was watching a YouTube video probably two or three weeks ago, and I forget exactly. It was one of those clips that had a lot of different people on it, but one of the 
quotes that I remember was never make it two days. And I kind of wasn't sure what the speaker was talking about, but then he went elaborate a little bit. And what it is, he said, if you have one bad day or you had one bad meal, he said, stop it at one bad day or one bad meal. He said, jump right back on the next day. Don't make it two bad days or two, you know, two days in a row, you miss your workout in three days. Cause he said, once you do that, it becomes a spiral effect. And I just think it's a cool idea because it is kind of catchy. Don't make it two days. Yes. And don't beat yourself up about the one day. I get a lot of people like that too. It's like, oh, I blew it. I messed up. It's like, no, no. Okay. Press the reset button and let's get back on. So I have to ask you from a doctor's perspective, I know so many people and and being a a fitness nut uh, and a workout nut myself, I think it's interesting is so many people on a Wednesday or Thursday will have a bad day and they automatically say, you know what? I'll just, uh, I'll start over again Monday. Monday. But I'm, but I'm curious to get your perspective on the medical or science behind it is if you do that, for example, on a Thursday or Friday, and then you say, you know what, I'll start Monday. Isn't there something behind having two or three or four of those quote unquote bad days that almost when that Monday comes, it's basically impossible to restart it? Hugely on the psychological side and the physiological side. So most of the reactions that we get in our body from a bad meal or from, you know, bad habits or whatever you do, those can have delayed reactions in your bloodstream anywhere from three to 21 days. So I tell people, if you go shorter, like say you're having a cheat every two or three days, you physically never let enough of that inflammation get out of your body or enough stuff to calm and reset to really get that forward progress. So if you mess up on a Thursday, well, if you get back on Friday by Monday, you're pretty much back to where you were Wednesday before. However, if you string two or three of those days together, you're creating massive inflammation. It's going to be harder to reverse that. It's going to take longer to get back on track. And that's when physiologically your brain chemicals start to change back. You'll get cravings back. You'll notice that when you've been off track a couple of days, all of a sudden you're wanting things you haven't wanted in months and your body's releasing different amounts of serotonin and you're creating that inflammation. So yes, the shorter amount of days that you can string together, the better or the quicker you can do a really good reset. So I tell people, if you're off track for three or four days in a row or you went on vacation you're going to need a concerted three days when you get home to do some type of pretty big reset for your body. Um, So sometimes it's doing, you know, all plant-based for three days, or maybe you're going to do some juicing or some bone broth or something, but you're going to need something pretty major to clean up what you just did over those four or five days versus if it was just one day, you can fix that pretty easily. So a good friend of mine always talks about the concept of you can't out train a bad diet. Why don't you just see if you could touch on that for a second? Agreed. I think that your nutrition is probably about 70 to 80% of your health and fitness. And then the exercise is the icing on top. That's where you get the definition. That's where you get the cardiovascular strength, but you can't outwork eating badly. I also tell people you can't out supplement or out herb your bad lifestyle choices. You can take all of that stuff and spend thousands of dollars a month on supplements. If you're not putting the right things in your body and fueling it the way it needs to, you're just never going to win that game. So from a medical perspective, I have to ask, so I'm a huge ice cream nut. So are are you telling me that if I worked out three or four times every single day, I could not eat ice cream every single, every single meal? Correct. Hate to tell you, but that's just not the way that goes. And there are healthier ice cream options. You have, you tried the Kato ice cream? They don't taste as good. (laughs) <laughs> I think they're delicious, but yeah, you have to get used to it. No, but it's moderation, right? It's like you are allowed to enjoy life. You are allowed to have the things that you want to have. As long as you're balancing that with majority of your choices should be good and healthy. And then you do have that 20% of life that if you want the burger, eat the stinking burger, but make sure that you're making consistently good choices on the other side. No, I think that's important. And I'm, I'm glad you touched on that for a second, because I think that's with with everything in all aspects of life, obviously, not just just health and fitness. It's it's all things as you know, you need to enjoy yourself. It's okay to work hard, but it's also okay to turn off the phone or spend some time with your friends or family. So, so I'm glad you touched on that. I wanted to get your perspective. If you could go back and give the 20 year old version of yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? <laughs> you don't know it all in life will kick you in the face a few times and it's okay. And you'll figure it out as you go. So my new motto in life is you adapt, you figure it out. And then, you know, things typically become your new normal. And I think we're always striving for perfection. I mean, I remember even early on um, in chiropractic school, having this vision of what business was going to be like and how much money we were going to make and all of this stuff. And then when things don't turn out, you almost feel like you failed, but it was an unrealistic expectation. So I think just knowing that there's going to be ebbs and flows, there's going to be ups and downs And truly, and I know so many people say this and it sounds so trite, but it's like, 
enjoy the process. I feel like half my life, I was in such a rush to get to the next thing. I always wanted to graduate college and I wanted to graduate school and I wanted to start my business and I wanted to make this much money. And I was always looking for what that next goal was going to be that I really for easily 10, 15 years missed out on how fun it was going through that process. So I think that would be really important to go back. I would do it differently. I was just talking to somebody last week and I think we touched on the same thing is in life, we have those goals. Let's get through middle school, get to high school, you know, get into a good college, get good grades, you know, find out your major. And I think what happens is I think we always have these goals and I'm not in any way, I'm a huge goal believer myself. And I think, and I, there's the science behind it, but I think it's, it's such good advice is to enjoy the process. It doesn't mean you don't work as hard or it doesn't mean you don't try to get into those really good schools or try to make a college sports team, but you can enjoy it along the way. So I think that's really good advice that I wish probably I could have given myself when I was 20 as well. Yep. And the goals are great. I mean, you need them. You need to have things that you're working on and tangible things that you can track, um, but give yourself a little bit of grace in the process. No, I'd like that. Give yourself some grace. So if I could give you, grant you the opportunity to have dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would you pick? Oh man. Um, That's a really tough question. You know, for me, my dad passed away of cancer a couple of years ago, and we'd actually lost touch um, for several years before that. And kind of knowing now his health journey and those types of things, there's a lot of things I wish I could have got to him about before that, that I think I would definitely choose that time to sit down with him. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. But I think it's, it's always interesting, that question, because you get a lot of different perspectives on people. So one of the things that we're, we're fascinated with at No Quit Living is the word accountability. And I think it has so much parallel in all walks of life. And I was just curious what accountability means to you. That is the motto of my life and <laughs> what I do with my patients and my friends and my family. Um, accountability for me is just having a sounding board, having people to bounce things off of both yourself and other people and being responsible for your choices, whether it's your health choices or your response to situations or your attitude or your mood or whatever it is that you have going on, knowing that you are truly always in control of whatever choice you make during that day and holding yourself accountable for those choices and knowing that that is creating the life that you're currently living is because of the choices and the accountability that you have chosen chosen to either follow or maybe not follow so well. So putting a lot of that on yourself, but also making sure that you have a good sounding board who can sometimes see things outside of your own perspective and rein you back in when needed. No, I think that's that's a that's a great answer. And I, I love that that question as well because it's another one of those open-ended questions where there is no right answer. And I'm always intrigued by the answers I, I get. And I always end up taking a, a ton of notes along the way. Wanted to just ask if you wouldn't mind just telling our listeners not only a little bit about where they can find you, but if you're on social media as well. And, and also, if you wouldn't mind just touching on your book that you mentioned before. Yeah. So I do a lot of health and wellness posts on my Instagram, which is Dr. Shannon DC. So D-R-S-H-A-N-N-Y-N-D-C on Instagram or my Dr. Shannon Pierce page on Facebook. Um, I have the Wellness Way Approach to Thyroid um, book out right now that we are promoting. It's kind of a guidebook for patients and doctors alike to really dig down and figure out what's going on with thyroid. Um, And then I also have, and I was going to offer this to you if you wanted to put a link on there, um, my webinar, I have the natural approach to thyroid as well as the find the answers to your chronic illness webinars that are really popular that a lot of people feel like they get a lot of great answers from. So that would be a great place to start just learning and digging in on how to start functional testing, how to find your answers. If you're struggling with health issues, what's your next step towards full recovery and a, just a life full of health and joy? So it might be a tough question, but if if I if I were to ask you, what's the one thing that everybody can do today that would help them just be a little bit more healthy? What would that be? It might be a tough question for you to answer, but putting you on a spot here a little bit. No, the one thing, if people need to reduce their stress, that would be, that would take away probably half of most health issues across the country. If people could learn to minimize stress and let things go, that would be number one. (laughs) And that's free and you don't even need me for that. (laughs) But um, Yes. No, I appreciate that. And then last question I want to ask you, if you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. As far as health goes, I really want people to understand that if you are sick and suffering, if you are in pain, if you have a condition, if you have a disease, it is 
in my very strong opinion, a lack of investigation is there is something we call, I call them triggers. So maybe it's a gut infection, maybe it's a pathogen, maybe it's biotoxins, maybe it's um, inflammation, any number of things, but your body is sending you warning signals. Stop trying to turn off the symptoms and just find a little bit of ease. Take some time and really investigate why this is happening. And for majority of those people, health and wellness is still available for you because I think that people get really discouraged and have been suffering with similar things for so long that you get to a point where you're just managing a disease. Don't give up on finding health freedom because it is out there. You just have to look differently and probably do things differently than you have up to this point. Shannon, I truly, truly appreciate you being on the show. I loved our conversation. You touched on so many different things, and I hope you and I can speak again soon. I definitely want to recommend our listeners to not only check out you on your social media channels, but also check out your book if they're interested as well. Love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate talking with you. I love what you're doing for everybody because it's so important for them to know not to give up on themselves, on their dreams, and just don't quit and really cool things happen. Today's episode is sponsored by the good people over at West Fair Communications, who publish the Westchester County Business Journal and the Fairfield County Business Journal. These newspapers do a wonderful job in covering all aspects of the business world within two of the most influential markets in the New York metropolitan area. You can also take advantage of their daily news feeds, which keep track on the companies and thought leaders in these important regions. For more information, take a look at www.westfaironline.com. Trust me, once you start reading, you won't quit. Thank you for listening to episode number 229. Dr. Shannon Pierce is all about paying it forward for others as she is helping so many people become healthier to ultimately become better versions of themselves. When I asked Shannon to define success, she posed a very simple question. Are you happy and joyful at night? If not, then simply change it. As we often discuss fitness and working out, Shannon said how nutrition is 70-80% and how exercise is the icing on top. As I mentioned on the show and something a good friend of mine often tells me, you can't out-train a bad diet. Shannon was very specific and clear that when it comes to working out, being healthy, or even other parts of life, we all have bad days and ultimately we all fall off. She stressed the importance of not beating ourselves up. If you have a bad day, a bad meal, just get back up and get back to it. So as you go for your greatness today, don't allow one bad day, one bad meal, or even a bad weekend of missing the gym to destroy your mindset. Instead, just get back up, get back at it, and make today a great day. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.